What's going on guys, this is Rob, and if you're enjoying the content that I'm uploading onto my channel, then feel free to subscribe, and you can also offer suggestions on topics and characters and storylines and whatnot that we can have discussions on uh, later on in this channel. Alright, there's a story... <laughs> There's a story where uh, Deadpool becomes Venom. Now, this story is <laughs> this story is written by Rick Remender, and it is a descent into absolute madness. Uh, partly because of the fact that on his mask, <laughs> Deadpool's wearing a mustache. I don't know how that works, <laughs> but apparently it does. Now, uh, this story also picks up in 1985. Now, the, the, the kicker about all this is that this treats uh, Secret Wars 2 as if it never really ended, right? I mean, when 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 Jim Shooter wrote Secret Wars 1, and it was just this mysterious being called the Beyonder that took all of villains and all the heroes and it put them on battle world and it made them fight each other you know when this story first popped up in 1984 it was all the rage it was like yeah this is crazy this is awesome you know uh it was meant to be a one-off but because of its popularity marvel launched secret wars number two which basically gave expansion on the beyonder the beyonder you know was curious about humanity showed up on earth and looked like john travolta from saturday night fever so what ended up happening is in this story the beyonder never left the beyonder was never defeated by the molecule man owen reese instead the beyonder was <laughs> the beyonder was messing around with people now Deadpool is contracted by Galactus. And the reason why he's contracted by Galactus is because the Beyonder merged Modok with the butt of Galactus. I don't know else how I don't, I don't know how else to say that. Like I don't I don't know how else to to <laughs> to say that to you guys. Uh, but the idea here is that Galactus basically contracts, uh, or at least he gives Deadpool the uh, the retcon expungifier and says your job is to go after the Beyonder and basically use the retcon expungifier to an annihilate him from existence. Now of course we know the expungifier is basically like a stand-in for the ultimate nullifier, right? Like the ultimate nullifier can obliterate things from existence. Well, the retcon expungifier removes things from continuity, so it's. It basically, <laughs> it treats the Beyonder like he never existed is essentially what happens. The problem with this is that when Deadpool finds the Beyonder, he's just totally enamored by, <laughs> he's totally enamored by his jerry curls. <laughs> Apparently his jerry curls are absolutely incredible. Uh, and because of that, Deadpool can't let it go. Not only that, for some reason or another, Deadpool has jerry curl now, which is <laughs> which is weird. But the funny thing about this too is uh, apparently the Beyonder took Billy Ocean and made him his limo driver. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, Billy Ocean was the guy who did the, the Caribbean the Caribbean Queen song. You know, now we're sharing the same dream. You know, like he did, he's the one that did that song. And uh, apparently the Beyonder loved it so much that he made Billy Ocean his driver. But there's also another reason why he brought in Billy Ocean. The reason for this is keep in mind, this basically treats the events of Secret Wars like they actually happen in the sense that Peter Parker eventually came across the Venom symbiote not knowing what it was, thinking it was a suit. It bonded to Peter Parker and he came back to Earth with his new costume. Of course, being a superhero, he immediately attacks the Beyonder and of course is like, look, you know, you made me who I am. You basically made me this Venom character. But then we realize the other reason why Billy, <laughs> Billy Ocean is here is that in addition to being one of the most famous singers of all times, uh, he is... <laughs> He's 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 very good at killing people. And what he basically <laughs> what he basically does, he this is God, Rick Remender, man. Rick Remender writes this line where he says, Hey Spider-Man, get into my dreams and out of my car. Now, this is basically a flip on the phrase on the song that Billy Ocean did, where he's like, you know, get out of my dreams and into my bed. Like that's basically that that's the song that they're playing on. God, I love this, dude. I love this story. The crazy thing about this though, with regards to Venom becoming or I'm sorry, Deadpool becoming Venom. Uh, because of the fact that Peter Parker is basically blasted with the, you know, this weapon, whatever it is that, that Billy Ocean's using, that the singer Billy Ocean's using, uh, the Venom symbiote's cast off of Peter Parker. And in response, it merges itself to Deadpool. Now, at this point, we basically pick up, like, we literally just jump forward to 1993. And the Beyonder's been living, like, this wild life, this ridiculously fun life, but but the novelties wore off. Not only that, and man, dude, Rick Remender's cold-blooded in this one. Not only that, uh, Tony Stark is a full-blown alcoholic. Like, the the his his whole alcoholism has gotten the best of him and there is god rick remender there is this uh really messed up line where deadpool's like what happened to the retcon expungifier you know whatever happened to that because i still have to kill the beyonder and tony stark says we pawned it we pawned it with the with the rest of my iron man suit and then he says he kept the glove he's still iron man he's still in control this is uh this is this is 
kind of offensive to be honest to alcohol like i've known alcoholics it's kind of offensive to alcoholics but it's also tony stark and it's a deadpool comic so it's i guess take it for what it's worth but what ends up happening here is deadpool basically says okay fine you know if we don't have the retcon expunger fire then i'm basically going to be a good guy and so what he does is he basically sells <laughs> he sells tony stark to advanced idea mechanics he literally sells tony stark and i guess they're going to take his brain or they're going to do whatever they do i don't think we ever find out but from here he basically goes on this trip to try to become a superhero by joining different different groups. Of course, he goes to the Fantastic Four and Reed, <laughs> Reed Richards says, we do not hire curly haired people, which of course is one of the most severe instances of discrimination that I've ever seen. Uh, he goes to the Avengers mansion and Jarvis chases him off with a broom. And then he goes, <laughs> he goes to the defenders. God, the defenders suck. He goes to the defenders and the defenders are desperate. They're like, you ring the doorbell of the defenders? We're hiring, please. And he's like, nope. <laughs> He doesn't even want to work with the Defenders. No one likes the Defenders. That's that's messed up. Now, that's old school Defenders. I'm pretty sure the new Marvel Now 2.0 Defenders will be pretty amazing. But in the end, like the, you know, Deadpool looks around and basically says the problem, the reason why he's not able to find gainful employment is because of the fact that the Venom symbiote exists in the form of Jerry Curl on his head. Now, this is... <laughs> God, this is ridiculous. This is when Rick Remender, well, if the comic hadn't gone off the rails before, it goes off the rails now. Like, this is when Rick Remender really uh, just kind of loses it. And the reason why is because, you know, it, it seems like the, uh, Deadpool does not have the Venom symbiote, but he still has the powers of Spider-Man. I don't know how. I, I don't know how that works, but it does. And so what he says is, okay, look, you know, if no one's going to take me on as a superhero, then I'm going to be my own superhero. And he essentially just goes around killing people. Like, that's what he does. He just kills criminals everywhere that he finds them. Not only that, we find out that the Beyonder has basically reinvigorated the battle world concept in the sense that instead of like traditional superheroes, you know, fighting against crime, instead they're all basically just fighting against each other in this giant battle royale. Now, when Deadpool gets there, Rick Remender starts making fun, making fun of comic book fans. He makes fun of you, he makes fun of me, like he makes fun of comic book fans. There's this guy, I guess he's super something, I don't, I don't know, the century or something like that, but there's this guy that appears to, uh, to Deadpool and basically says, you look ridiculous in that costume. That guy over there is wearing an American flag and he's got an american flag discus that guy is an iconic hero and then the response of deadpool is like hey look man i mean that doesn't really matter i mean the suit doesn't really matter <laughs> you know i mean you have like that guy over there who's basically moon knight you know he's just as good as, as captain america or something along those lines but then like this weird superhero just like freaks out and this is when recommender starts making fun of fans because he's like you do not take superheroes on the street and put them on teams with big superheroes street superheroes stay in their place big team superheroes stay in their place you can't allow things to mix because if you allow things to mix then it makes it different and things that are different are weird and I don't understand it and I get confused and I don't like it and it's it's <laughs> <laughs> it's him making fun of comic book fans basically saying comic book fans don't like change like comic book fans are scared of change because it, may, it puts them in a, a position where they're not comfortable as a comic book fan i don't consider that to be the case but i think it's also pretty funny like <laughs> it's pretty hilarious but the fact remains here that we basically pick up you know <laughs> we pick up with jerry springer this comic is insane we pick up with jerry springer and apparently we have deadpool we have some chick with the venom symbiote hair now with the jerry curl and then we have the beyonder and and they're here because of the fact that this girl who's calling herself the carnage curl is with the beyonder and deadpool's upset about it deadpool's angry just because of the fact that this girl caused him so much hassle the reason why was because deadpool's goal was to invite the beyonder over to his house for grand gala and the goal was to just basically kill the beyonder the issue with this is that the beyonder brought his ex-girlfriend <laughs> brought deadpool's ex-girlfriend with him and his ex-girlfriend apparently carnage curl was just like this crazy chick that like burned his house down that like dropped a deuce in his home i mean it was <laughs> It was, it was really messed up, but uh, in the end, like she basically says, look, I'm with the Beyonder now. You have to show me some respect. And when Deadpool's like, why? <laughs> she says, because I'm pregnant. <laughs> Now, the reason why this is ridiculous is because if you guys ever watched Jerry Springer back in the day, it was like the big, huge drop. It was like, man, like, you know, this guy's been cheating on me or something like that, or this girl's been cheating on me, or it's just like some ridiculous situation. And then like the mic drop moment is like, I'm pregnant. And it's just, it's it's like, oh my God. Well, then we find out that apparently the Beyonder is not the father of this child. <laughs> the father of this child is Galactus. <laughs> The plot thickens. Galactus fathered, like he basically slept with Beyonder's girlfriend 
in order to get his revenge on the Beyonder, merging MODOK with his butt. And so because of this, the two of them just get into a massive fight and the Earth is destroyed. Now, from here, Rick remembers like whatever hashtag logic, we end up picking up with Deadpool having saved the world. And the reason why is because in the fight between Galactus and the Beyonder, Deadpool was just like, all right, you guys are losing your minds. You guys are way too powerful to be fighting like this. You're gonna, you're gonna wipe everything out of existence. He used the retcon expungifier to obliterate them from continuity. And so the world celebrated Deadpool. They were like, yeah, Deadpool saved the world. Deadpool's amazing. Amazing. Well, the problem with this is that in the mind of Deadpool, he's been seeking admiration this entire time. He's been seeking people to look at him and believe that he is the best, he's the, the best superhero, the greatest of all the superheroes. The issue with this is that you still have superheroes around there. And so Deadpool's not getting everyone's adoration. Instead, you know, they're they're celebrating Thor, they're celebrating Captain America, so on and so forth. And so what Deadpool decides to do is kill Thor. It's the most logical thing, apparently, for Deadpool to do. And so he goes, so when Thor's using the bathroom, Deadpool runs up on him, he grabs grabs his hammer, he kills Thor, he basically becomes Deadpool Venom Thor, and then kills all the superheroes except for the women that he considers to be attractive so that they can admire how attractive he is and so on. The problem with this is that he's basically just become a dick. Like that's what he is. He's, he's basically like, yes, I'm the greatest person in the world. You all should worship me. But it's funny because he's having this conversation with Doc Samson and Doc Samson's like, no, usually when it comes to something like this where people say that nobody respects them or they're causing drama or something like that, they usually do things like causing drama because it makes them feel like they're achieving something when they're not but he also says that the reason why people didn't like you before was because you were a dick i mean you could say sure like they just didn't respect you because you were a small time superhero or you were, were really more of an anti-hero more than anything else but it was really just because you were a jerk and no one liked you and so in response deadpool rips off the head of doc samson goes and grabs the retcon expungifier and like retcons the story out of continuity that's basically that's how rick remender ends this this story essentially doesn't exist in marvel comics seems to be the case this story is insane but i love it i love the story where deadpool becomes venom because it's so ridiculous because it's so insane and and i think that every once in a while we have to read crazy insane comics because they <laughs> help to keep us grounded it's like it's like sci-fi movies right like sometimes you just gotta sit down and you gotta watch frankenfish not because frankenfish is a good movie not because it's anywhere close to what anybody could even consider to be anything remotely near a good movie but because of the fact that you you just need things like that it's, it's like that with every Thing, right? I mean, you got to play games like Call of Duty so you can play the bad and you can appreciate the good. You play Call of Duty, you're like, man, I really like Battlefield. Or if you hate Battlefield and you play Call of Duty, you say, I play Battlefield so I can appreciate Call of Duty. Whatever the case may be, like you got to have everything in balance, you know? And, and I love the way this whole thing, this whole thing comes out. But the fact remains, if you guys are new here to Comics Explain, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like. I'm sure there's going to be a few people who take themselves too seriously and are like, oh, this, you were laughing in the video and I don't like it. But uh, in any event, guys, <laughs> we're going to bring this to an end and I will catch you all later. Peace.